Good evening, Galleon. This is Mayor Tom O'Leary. Uh, Monday night. Uh, happy to be uh, here again. Want to before we get into any questions, uh, I want to take you on a vir virtual tour of the depot. Uh, was over there today talking with a contractor about his suggestions of what to do as as far as remodeling uh, the and restoring the second floor, and so we wanted to. Uh, just go through, sort of tease the fact that there are going to be real tours on uh, the 22nd on Saturday, among other things at Depot Day. So I'll just stop with that, and it's uh, about 10 minutes. Uh, I think if you haven't been in the building in a while, you'll be uh, you'll be able to see the future potential. So I'll stop there. Here we go. Hey, welcome to the Big Four Depot. Come on in, we'll take a virtual tour. This weekend on the 22nd, uh, there are going to be a whole day of activities here, which will include an actual tour for those people who see this and want to have more. There'll also be uh, speakers, food trucks, kind of a, a one day uh, open house, if you will. What we wanted to do this morning was sort of walk you through uh, this being the main lobby area that will, uh, we hope by the end of this year, early next year, be the location for the SCAT, Seneca Crawford Area Transit, their headquarters for Crawford County, uh, we hope to be here. There's a state grant involved and we're working with that organization, the transit organization, to, to coordinate that. Uh, really not change much of the footprint initially, but I think we're likely to do something about this lively green color. So we'll come on in here and, and um, turn to the south and uh, to give you a glimpse of what some may remember as the uh, kitchen and bathroom years ago when it was uh, more of a flea market. But this is the original bathroom. The echo is kind of funny and one, one of the main plans would be is to restore uh, public restrooms here for uh, people who would use the the old train depot as a bus stop. The plan is uh, to renovate this at least so that it can be used as a lobby and that would be again uh, area transit group and certainly we're, we're going to keep uh, a, a railroad train theme and you can see there's a there's just a, a little bit of a, a taste of that old New York Central. We come up here over the weekend or as the uh, Friends of the Depot and the Depot Inc. begin to uh, open this up on the weekends for tours. The renovation of the stained glass in just the beginning of the um, uh, renovation or cleaning and getting this woodwork back to its original orders is really impressive. These are artificial, not artificial, but temporary walls you can hear and in, in an area that we hope we as in the Depot Inc, Friends of the Depot, City of Galleon, uh, hope can be renovated for train watching. This would be one of the locations that we expect to be able, have it worked out exactly with SCAT, but this may be a public area on the weekends. This right here, would, if you take a quick look, is the old ticket area. Gentili's meat for those people who were the customers way back when. Um, envision this to be their primary office and uh, we'll be working with them over the next few months uh, to, to decide what level of restoration we're going to be doing on the Wayne's coating that you can see, that you'll see throughout. A little bit dark here. As this would be where the where drivers and employees uh, would station themselves, lockers or those areas. It's really um, best suited for that. Now there's a separate entrance there. It's always Christmas at the depot, so we'll try to get that artificial Christmas tree a little bit of company over the next months or years. The number of small offices uh, where railroad staff. I want to point out, um, you can see some of the, the, 
the yet to be cleaned up, but I, I, I have to say a uh, great thanks to the people who volunteered from the two railroad promotional groups, the Depot Inc. and the uh, Friends of the Depot came up here. If you had seen a before and after, you would be uh, more impressed. But the, but the visual of these smaller offices is really what, what uh, we hope to be building on. Here's the super secret place we won't go up to the third floor and sometime we'll, we can take I would think on the weekend when uh, tours are going to happen um, I don't know who this audio guy is but when we catch up with him so it's really limited uh, vandalism tagging if you will but back to the third floor uh, really awesome space but what the renovation of the third floor would do uh, to the cost really is uh, we made it we had a temporary moment of sanity and decided we really can't renovate the third floor uh, certainly at this time but uh, I think this what what is here we can tackle uh, the heating units certainly in this common areas will have to be replaced and that's part of the the budget part of the next big investment uh, here in getting this back into use. Looking at removal of uh, this wainscoting, some of the paint, I think over here to my right is probably the best example of if we can get it off, we'll take it off. Everybody has a different idea of taste, but, but blue wainscoting <laughs> with the light blue rail is kind of look kind of you can see there's more uh you have to have a vision and a, and a love of this building to really want to see it through okay this this room for from the time the city acquired it has been the the room around we should put a wrestling mat in here because ever, there's been all kinds of that's my office that's my office uh and it's um i think our vision now and matt you can probably go out the window over here and get a feel for many people the idea of watching trains on a on a uh, weekend afternoon or morning is uh not their idea of fun but trust me when i tell you around the state where there is there are safe and uh i think at the end of this uh reinvestment attractive places to watch trains uh you'll really see uh this is a small yeah, it's not big tourist attraction, but something that'll attract a few dozen people on every weekend. I think that the two places that are close by where you can see this as an example is up in Greenwich. They have a platform built and there's a lot of trains there. If you know uh, railroad activity, railroad architecture or route structure. And then Fostoria is, is probably the best example they have really, um, done a lot to, to invite the public, but do it in a safe way. So anyways, as you look at out of this um, <clears throat> particularly large bill, or room rather, uh, you can see uh, the need for the city to tear down that building in the background. That's in, the, in, in progress. It's kind of in your face at this point. Um, will be a popular place for people to come watch trains. But as you look south there, you can see where traffic comes in from different directions, it'll be a it will be a favorite for the I don't know how the word how the, the term rail buff. That's a, I'm not I'm sure they're sure. sort of a dig, but the rail buffs a lot. Um, again, there's uh, extra space up here. I probably want to emphasize um, the the vision or the goal of having this as co-office or office sharing spaces uh, become pretty popular in a virtual era where you can do a lot of things at home work from home but it's also nice at times to be able to have a meeting place or uh, uh, you know some place where you can get staff together this the uh sure will be able to uh look at the ceiling this room has made 
People who've been up here, you know, would go ooh and ah. I can't believe how much progress this was. Uh, the room that I believe this one and the one next door was the original Eagle Dance Studio. It's uh, in this uh, renovation that's seen its better days, but you can see the same sort of thing about uh, being able to view trains, and it's a really nice space. We're excited about this this space where you could have five or six, eight people. You know, watching trains as they as they uh, come by. I also think this is, as I said before, for small office settings. This office, excuse me, this space will likely be uh, more of a full rebuild than a. Uh, so we've got a lot of renovation to do here. We're just talking with a, uh, a carpenter, building contractor, and giving us some advice on it. So. Last or last for those people who earn, yearn for that kind of uh, wall covering, this room will probably get some 21st century drywall. With that, we'll just uh, thank everybody for watching. We'll pick this up in just a few minutes. Matt will edit this in, and, and we'll probably get to questions right away from that. So thanks for going through the depot uh, with us this morning. Uh, we will be here on Saturday with a number of things. Train ride, a little uh, small locomotive that will take a loop around the, the, uh, the property, uh, maybe sneak onto Washington Street. Uh, food vendors, a, a series of talks, some of them about uh, upcoming passenger rail and some about other kind of rail related topics. So, so pretty excited about uh, the potential. Uh, whether the weather cooperates or not, this will be a great place to come this weekend, and uh, we encourage you to be here. The time is, and until 4. Well, I hope you uh, got a flavor for what the depot is uh, beginning to, that it is beginning to realize its potential. And uh, uh, Another thing to mention about that 10 minutes is it was uh, almost 14 minutes, so we did we did edit it down. But anyways, um, uh, have a plan. We're going to work on executing it. I think it's uh, we're probably, in all candor, a year or so away from really being able to have both the second and the first floor done. But um, stop up on Saturday. Um, there'll be from 10 to 4, a whole range of things. It's a... Uh, I know been promoted on Facebook and uh, there'll be a combination of uh, uh, informational uh, lectures about the inter inner urban, some presentation about the, the new uh, passenger rail proposal uh, and if I'm not mistaken the community ban is going to make a, uh, a not so surprise appearance so it's a little bit of everything some food trucks and and uh, it's uh, should be a lot of fun Train still going to be there? Yes. Okay, there's a little a, a train that is not on a track, but is uh, a little amusement type train, and uh, we have a little pathway set up or a little track that it'll, it'll operate on. So there's something there for the kids. So a tour of the depot, a little bit of information, some food, a ride for the kiddies sounds like a like a, a real good idea and a real good uh, shared uh, depot ink. And the friends of the depot, I believe, are both working together on this. Uh, before we get off Saturday, the 22nd, I want to mention that uh, it is Community Cleanup Day. Uh, we've been able to arrange. Uh, uh, Willig Local Business is going to spot a trailer for us, so we'll have at least a trailer full of tires. So there's no, at this point, no specific limit, but uh, that's good to, to see, and we're going to uh, continue to work out the funding arrangement with the uh, Board of Health, but uh, that's it's uh, a big activity. Uh, uh, just so many people in the community uh, come through on that morning, so uh, look forward to that, sort of. But we'll be there and uh, hope for good weather, and because uh, I know it's appreciated by folks. Um, any questions yet? Uh, I've got a couple things. So yeah, okay, um, let's do that. Um, first off, Dee commented, thank you for the tour of the depot. It was very interesting. 
And then uh, Dawn asked, is there any lead paint in the building? You know, not that I know of. Uh, it was painted in the 80s, mid 80s, was the last, was when all that wainscoting was painted. So a good, uh, a good question. And before it's, our plan as far as the wainscoting where the paint is, uh, is to uh, remove it and have it uh, treated off site instead of uh, an endless kind of chemical stripping of that paint. So uh, that part of it's a little bit in the, the early planning stages, but um, thanks for the heads up with the question that gives, the, gives us the heads up about the lead paint. Yeah. Okay, and that's else? all I had so far. Yeah, like I'm, I'm, you know, we can come back to that, but it's really uh, remarkable uh, uh, how far that building has come. Uh, when when uh, I was first elected uh, in 14, uh, there had not been any money spent on that in 10 years. And so as we worked our way back to a little bit more stable uh, financial footing, we were able to begin sort of one year at a time, uh, begin the, the this uh, slow but sure uh, redevelopment. We've got the outside looking pretty decent, uh, grant money for SCAT coming in and then our own city commitment uh, as we were showing on the second floor so um, that's what I got that's what we have on the depot um, there are a, you know a few other things I want to mention as, as um, sort of wait for other questions to come in over the last couple of weekends the Kiwanis Club has uh, done quite a job of uh, giving that spring cleanup to the square uh, mulch did some uh, planning and so I want to thank uh, that group uh, Kiwanis in particular it's funny how over the years that that uh, duty or responsibility switches from garden clubs that aren't quite as uh, prevalent as they were even just a few years ago uh, over to um, a service club so um, I think as the summer goes on we'll have to keep an eye on the weeds but I think we have a good start and uh, you know, every little bit of, um, of um, sprucing up is a bad word, but fixing up the uptown, I think that uh, that helps uh, from, and from so many different points of view. So that's going on. Um, I want to thank people for having done that the last couple of weekends. Um, this may seem a little far out in the way I operate. It probably seems forever out, but we've set a date after... I got a smile after it's been open for a year or more, uh, but a set a date for a formal ribbon cutting on the bike path and uh, have some things planned for that day. Um, should be in the mid morning on the 10th, it's a Thursday. And if uh, all goes well, uh, we'll try to incorporate uh, groundbreaking for that new leg of the, of the uh, trail uh, that we plan to, to uh, clear the path and construct the, the, uh, the new oh, about a half mile of additional uh, bikeway walkway. So that's on the 10th of June. Um, and so uh, this week is not a council meeting week, but uh, as often as the case in the third week, that's when the Economic Development Airport Committee meets on Tuesdays and then on Wednesday is Finance Committee. And both of those uh, committees have a, a relatively full agenda. Uh, it's, I think, worth noting that this will be the first uh, run at a face-to-face -face committee meeting since, uh, you know, gosh, over well over a year. Uh, wish us luck. Our plan is to be able to um, have those those meetings open, much as they have been. You know, one of the things about the Zoom meetings is it has uh, really allowed a lot more people uh, to be part of those committee meetings, either just watching them or picking them up and watching them, you know, the next night or later on. I get the pretty strong sense that that's helped uh, inform the part of the community that is uh, interested in local civic affairs or city government. So, uh, you know, tomorrow night we'll uh, be talking in the Economic Development uh, Committee about a couple of uh, proposed pieces of legislation 
that would allow the city to receive uh, two sets of state funding, uh, one through uh, Development Services Agency, uh, that is, uh, is, has been talked about. It has a number attached to it. it. sounds like a football play, but it's 629 funds, and those will be going through the state controlling board, we think, in, in mid-June, uh, but we'll have to uh, do some work uh, to uh, allow for that money to be received. Uh, the way those, these grants typically work is they're reimbursable, so we'll be talking with the auditor and working through the council committees to get legislation set up to be able to receive that money and then most likely then reimburse the general fund which will uh, advance the funds so that we can pay the contractor and, and move forward. Um, the second set of funds are is, is, uh, is uh, some additional money. Uh, pleased to get notified late last week that an additional $75,000 has been committed to that same roadway project. Uh, the, the first 462000 a lot of money, was only 70% of the construction costs. So uh, efforts been underway uh, to, to bring some other state funds to that and got uh, notified from um, Gary Frankhouse Thursday afternoon that there's uh, an additional 75000 now, we'll still have to do the same thing to receive those dollars. There's still about 125,000 estimate of, um, of local funding that has to be put together uh, before this project can be uh, bid in and let out. Um, another thing that we'll discuss again at the committee level is whether or not this committee wants to take off the table some legislation that was, um, was um, uh, de was delayed, put on hold, if you will, uh, a couple of meetings ago, uh, and um, if if we're going to be receiving these funds and allocating funds out of the city's capital improvement funds, uh, which is another piece of legislation, if that's going to happen, then we really need to uh, get about getting those uh, pieces of infrastructure designed, and so that's the that's the legislation that was put on the table. So we'll talk about it tomorrow night, see if we can get that uh, uh, moved forward, brought back uh, under active consideration by council, and um, see how that, how that happens. I think a procedural thing that I'm, I'm, I'm going to ask council to consider, uh, but it's a good thing in, in, in every way, is uh, the reappointment of Chad Miller to the Port Authority Board. Uh, when that uh, group was formed a couple of years ago. There, they were there were staggered terms. We've already replaced a couple of folks uh, and reappointed some folks uh, whose terms were the shortest. And now we've got a, a couple more uh, uh, reappointments to make. This is one that needs to be done. And um, to have continuity, I think Chad's appointment runs out on May 31st. So we're going to try to get that done. Uh, in the last meeting in May and so he can continue to function. He's been the secretary treasurer and I think it's been mentioned a bunch of times, documented uh, I think with some frequency about all the work that he's done to, um, to uh, get the Port Authority up and running and kind of bring, uh, you know, bring active action to that group. So that's uh, tomorrow night at, at uh, Economic Development. Um, Finance Wednesday is, uh, you know, that, that committee meeting will come together, its final agenda uh, throughout the day tomorrow. A couple of key things that I, that, uh, that, that Mayor's office is going to put on the agenda are uh, a discussion, active discussion of what to do with the CARES Act funds. Uh, I think people who follow this know that we have some remaining dollars from last year, have until the end of this year to spend those. And then the larger uh, allocation of funds to the city and, and the, in the countywide, as a matter of fact, is uh, the American Rescue Plan, the, the new money. And so um, by Wednesday, I think we'll have a chance to talk uh, at the committee level about ideas that council has some ideas that the uh, mayor's office has, and we'll see what uh, what happens there. 
Last thing I'll say on, on this topic before we see if we have some more questions is tomorrow morning there's a countywide meeting among all the jurisdictions. Uh, really, I think the idea uh, popped up from the commissioner's office, uh, and so uh, it's going to be held over at the partnership office. So uh, over to View Cyrus I go, and hopefully I'll come back alive. So. Anyways, we have any commercials, or can you see some commercials? What the hell no. We're going to sell commercials next week. Um, <laughs> any questions? I'm sorry. No commercials tonight, but we do have a couple more questions. Okay, good. Uh, jumping back to the depot, Cindy asked, are there plans to have a restaurant in the depot? No. No, I think probably we'll see what the final design uh, for the lobby area is. What I think may happen is that... Uh, the owner, the city, and the tenant, uh, SCAT, would well, negotiate the ability to have um, small parties or receptions there. So, no, there won't be a restaurant. I think this in this new age of carrying in food, maybe there'll be some the ability to carry in food. Uh, the, the sort of frequently asked partnering or, or twin question to, is there a restaurant, is... Um, sort of the observation that it would make a great brew pub. I, it's not, not now. I don't think uh, when you begin to look at it, uh, it, um, you know, a temporary beer permit, it might qualify in, under the existing uh, ordinance, but I really don't see it as a, as a restaurant pub. Uh, doesn't mean that we can't use it for special events or, uh, you know, uh, private parties, although that has the wrong sound, not private parties, but graduation parties, small wedding receptions, those kind of things. It might be, as, as it turns out, it might be a little, uh, you know, more n historic, nostalgic than the pavilion next door is. That's, that's pretty much early 21st century design, and it's real functional, but uh, some folks might like the more historic, so we'll kind of see where it's at. But the, the answer to the question, sorry, Cindy, I got going on that, is no, there's no plans for a restaurant. Okay, thanks, Mayor. Uh, next question tonight came from Matthew. He mm -hmm. said, as a local business, we would like to challenge other local businesses to sponsor benches that can be placed along the bike trail. Each business could purchase a bench and have their business name on it as a sponsor. Yeah, it's a neat idea. Well, the um, and two out of the three. Back up a little bit. There are, if you were to go out there over the last couple of days, uh, and I think one of these little rectangles maybe moved a little bit. Uh, we had a couple people go out from the service department and locate where the concrete pads will be for three benches. Now, my understanding is that. Uh, and they're j they're a lot like the ones in Graders Park down there in the in Icy Park. In fact, maybe the different color is the only difference. While some things down in Icy Park haven't been durable, those benches it's not meant as a challenge, but the benches have held up pretty pretty well. So that's what's going to be there. And our plan is, uh, and hope is that the Kiwanis and the Rotary are going to step forward and fund the two of them. Now the third one. I think is, is at this point likely a city expense. So if there are some businesses, the ch GoFundMe page, heck it is a commercial. But anyways, they're about 900 bucks. So if Matt has some, some ideas about how to pool resources together. I think that's, that's a, a good idea. I, my guess is that three of them in that eight tenths of a mile is, is probably enough, but but that's a that's a start that we have. So, yeah. So anyway, that's what that's my best answer for that. So if somebody wants to pick up the cost of that third bench, I guess it's nine hundred plus concrete. So, anyways, there you go. What else we got? Okay, uh, Dawn asked for an update on a grocery store. The um, you know since last week, not a lot. Uh, I do believe it's down to a few things like uh, air conditioning. I'm not privy to it though, Don, so I don't want to speculate. But there's something, you know, the landlords, 
would have to make a major investment, as I understand it, and that probably is a function of how long of a lease uh, the, they would be able to negotiate with Bueller. So that's pretty much what my understanding is. My feedback to uh, people at the chamber who have met uh, with uh, some of the lead leasing agents with parent uh, management um, is that there hadn't been any sort of activity uh, on the uh, liquor permit. So if you go back from the time Geyer shut down and there was the discussion of a Galleon Fresh Market, uh, you, you, you may recall that we as a community, they, they, the state had issued the liquor permit uh, for this operation that was never able to kind of put things together and come to town. So um, when you look at Bueller's, the, the business that's been named, many of their uh, other grocery stores have uh, liquor agencies and they certainly have, uh, have uh, beer and wine. So I think that is another piece of the puzzle, the heating, cooling, and uh, I think it probably is important um, source of revenue it always was a key part of the of the guyers plan the business plan if you will so anyway it'll be the fall of the year dawn so you keep tuning in i love to hear from you but the answer until maybe september is still working on it so i said last week to get mount or uh, station somebody with like a stakeout and see if if uh, you see air conditioning equipment being hauled out then hauled back a new stuff hauled in then we know we're real close to the opening the finish line of this long wait so what do we got okay uh, next question tonight came from jerry yeah. he asked will the city replace the roof on the former waterworks building or does it plan to demolish it you know that's um Sometimes I think that there's a there are bugs in this office because the oftentimes we get a question or a phone call right after we begin discussing it. We have a quote, Jerry. Um, it's uh, from one local a roofer. The idea would be to replace it, patch and replace it. Um, as I as I recall, it's. Uh, and we've only got it a couple of days ago, so it's not like it's a faded memory. I think it was about 34000 I know it was less than 35000 to replace the roof. So, um, gee, in anybody's book, um, small city, big shot, big city, small private investor, 34000 is a, a large investment. So <clears throat> the discussion first is to see if there's money in uh any of the funds that would qualify for that. I'm a little bit reluctant to, if you will, tab it off the water fund. Heavens, it's, I mean, we have the lifelong Galleonites know what it used to be, but it, it wasn't that when we were youngsters. So, um, so part of it will be trying to identify the right source of funding in the budget, but the, but the, the quote's about 35,000. You start to get committed to doing something practical with the building uh, if you, if you uh, restore the roof. So we'll begin to look at that next step after we identify where that 30, 35,000 will be um, drawn from in the existing budget. Yeah, it's, if you find it irritating or embarrassing, I share that feeling. It's, uh, and all I can do is kind of lamely point down to where the herpic tennis courts used to be and say, well, you know, if you give us some time, we'll get that straightened out. So, um, yeah, I, if, if people most affected in the neighborhood have some opinions, there, you know, we, we certainly get a lot of feedback up here uh, at City Hall. The other thing is um, if somebody has uh, what they would consider a, a, a creative use for the, for the, for the structure, even if it's only storage, we can go that route. But uh, yeah, we're, we're back to the original question. We're going to replace the roof um, and um, looking for uh, areas in the budget that might be uh, able to fund it. Okay, thanks, Mayor. Uh, next question tonight came from Luby. 
You said during the last heavy rain we had, um, there was terrible flooding in the yards over in the Sarah Avenue area and uh, couldn't get out onto the road. Mm -hmm. uh, something needs done about the flooding. Yeah, you know, Lupi, I think it's, uh, I wasn't out there, uh, but we had a lot of similar uh, complaints. Uh, where you're at, it's not a matter of the Olentangy backing up and the, and the storm drains don't have any outlet. Um, I suspect, and we'll send somebody out um, tomorrow, uh, is the Shoemaker Ditch, which we cleaned up, boy, it seems like four or five years ago, that most of that water uh, drains into, and then kind of meanders its way through, comes out at 6th Avenue, goes under Harding Way, and heads to, to the Olentangy from there. Without seeing it, I, I suspect that it needs to be cleaned out and mowed again. So it, um, without too much detail, it's a peculiar drainage uh, course that is in part in the county and uh, uh, the maintenance of that water course that Lupe's talking about really is uh, what's on county maintenance. So we'll take a look at it. We'll talk to the county engineer and come up with a plan. But I gu I'm guessing it's probably overgrown. It's been, like I said a minute ago, five, six years ago since we cleaned it out. And the bad news is it took us about a year or so to get, it, to get that arrangement with the county. So anyway, I hate that. You know, I think most everyone had uh, water issues in town closer you are to the to the stream and the less of an outlet you had I think that's that a lot of uh, we had a lot of other people concerned all right and then is that I hope there's another question loopy gonna cause us to end on such a downer so <laughs> uh, yeah uh, last one I have as of right now came from Dawn she asked for an update on the dog park you know uh, I've been thinking about this for a couple of days and it's a split decision, as they say in uh, boxing or wrestling or what, whatever, uh, at least around my household. Anybody who has um, had the challenge, opportunity to, to work with me would say that I that I um, don't flip-flop, but I'm always considering the best, trying to figure out the best way to do uh, a project, in this case, <coughs> the dog park. So... And good initial discussion. I think there was preliminary uh, agreement. I know there was a unanimous agreement on council to invest some money at Kobe Park and then some at South Park. Okay. This will get the softballers who, who aren't dog folks uh, excited. <clears throat> it was out at the Pico Park. And, um, oh, my God, ton of people out there. And uh, all in the, the, the girls' softball. On the north side of that parking lot, though, there is a there's are, are a few acres that have parking that, depending on where you're at in the community, may be a little more accessible. Um, one of the things, so so here I go again. I'm sort of vacillating, and so we're going to take a look at Pico Park. But the short answer is we're going to locate two. Um, dog parks this year, uh, what's stopping us from uh, actually ordering the fence and getting this underway is uh, we make the request to the Freeze Foundation, they um, make a request, they draw down the money from the bank, and that usually takes about 30 or 45 days, so we're in that uh, itching to get going mode on that in one of the projects that's that's in that, the, in fact, the uh, one of the people who uh, has a bit on a lot of our work it's in terms of fencing is going to be out uh, in the next week or so looking at some replacement of fence at Pico, not Dog Park, and then we'll, we'll drag him over and uh, try to show him the outline of what we want to do about four foot of, unless somebody has a better product, chain link fence. So anyways, there you go. We are, we will have, um, we will be moving that. I, the heck of it is, and it happens every year, the way this funding cycle works, we get the money kind of in the middle of the summer and construction season. So people recall 
the the we almost get them done at the end of the year or do get them done like the graders park but if you go back a few years before that when we did the splash park we you know we we uh, uh, missed the target a couple of times so we're gonna shoot for uh, installation of the the fences at the uh, dog park and uh, that is once the mayor decides where 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 we think is the best idea but it's likely out at Kobe and, and uh, down at South Park. So. Okay, thanks, Mayor. I just had a follow-up question come in from Loopy. Yeah. Uh, since we pay separate taxes on the Shoemaker Ditch, shouldn't they clean it out more often? Who should we call on this? Well, the, 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 the people to call to see what the balance is in that ditch fund. So Loopy's right, you do pay, uh, would be the county engineer. Um, the once it's once it's dipped out as the the term is that uh, is is expensed back to the county engineer who will likely do that that's that that's paid for and then that fund is drawn down to pretty close to zero sometimes below zero to dip it um, we'll make a note to to check that tomorrow to see what the with the uh, with the uh, balance in that ditch for the shoemaker ditch so yeah they um, and the reason it takes a few years is because they would tell you I'm not saying this that your assessment isn't high enough you need to pay more if you wanted to get it done uh, sooner so um, well uh, I, I'm I'm glad you mentioned it. I'm sorry it was screwed up uh, early last week, but uh, I, you know we're on it. As I mentioned a little while ago, there's a countywide meeting. I'll uh, mention to county engineer this question, and uh, there's, a, there's another fellow, Jason Long, who is on top of this, who has been with the county engineer for a long time, or with the office a long time. He really is uh, keeps an eye on those ditch assessments and those petition ditch funds. So. We'll shoot you a message or, or try to get the word back out to you, Loopy, uh, from what I find out tomorrow and the next day. Okay, those are all the questions I had. All right. Stay tuned. Democracy in action tomorrow night. We're going to try to get back face-to-face. -face. I, I think I mentioned four topics. There may be a fifth topic on that um, uh, develop, economic development agenda and then as I alluded to before um, the, the finance committee agenda has just taken shape and so as the, these grant dollars come in as we move money from uh, a more dormant fund into active use there's going to be a, a handful of pieces of legislation changes that have to be made that are uh, affect the operations and we'll be working with the auditor's office to try to get that set up and and uh, I, I, not that I'm um, I, don't, I don't think there's any great worry about most of this legislation but certainly we got to get the consensus on council to to approve some of these things so either come on up to the council meeting uh, and and uh, see it live or tune in tomorrow night and wish us luck trying to get this uh, in a zoomable kind of uh, 21st century user-friendly format so with that thanks a lot appreciate the the uh, conversation and we'll see you next week uh, I guess committee members will see you the next two nights good night <laughs>